this place we're on, there's three sections. The mountains up in front of us, those are the Wichita Mountains. We're about a mile from the wildlife refuge right here where we're at. Like for mine and Trevor's deal, I, I'll have them when they're two and three or three and four and they're just green colts and I'll take them and I'll, I start them roping and mainly what I'm doing is just putting a foundation on them and I get a big part of that done outside. So in the winter, we'll be doctoring wheat pasture cattle on them and then in the summer, early in the morning, I'll just take one or two colts and prowl through some cattle since we're not feeding in the summer. And, Check them that way to get these colts out. Like this colt, he had never seen the outside of an arena and done anything other than lope circles and stuff. So just in a matter of two weeks, I'd covered a bunch of ground on him and had to rope a few outside and it, it matures their minds real quick and sure speeds up the process of getting a good foundation on them. This is G-Wagon. He's a four year old that Trevor and I are partners on. Ty and Melanie Smith found him for us. We were looking for another four-year-old to take to the rope horse maturities and Ty called me about this one and he had just been rodeing the reining and didn't make the cut and said he was gonna make a good horse but needed a lot of miles and miles as in traveling miles outside and he uh, called me and said I got one for you so this is him and we're putting the miles on him now. And when I got him, just the first few days pecking around with him, I, I went to swinging a rope and stuff, and he would just nearly lose his mind. He didn't, he didn't know anything other than somebody just sitting on his back and pulling on him or kicking on him. And he couldn't do anything other than slow lope. You couldn't long trot him. Uh, so he didn't know how to travel for a head horse. They've got to learn how to stretch out and travel and go somewhere and so he couldn't do that and I went to riding him outside and my dad took him to our riverland some and just going through the brush or seeing wild pigs or crossing the water or just loping across the hill to check cattle swinging a rope it's they're seeing a lot more than just arena dirt um, they're they're having to do a job they've got to get in the trailer and be hauled around by themselves, which half the time they nicker and act goofy, you know, and they just, they learn that they're dependent on me out here and I'm dependent on them. And they just, their minds mature a lot more. And then if like for this one, you know, he hadn't, the first thing I ever had to rope on him was outside, but heck I've got, Right here, I got three sections to do it on. I don't, I'm not in a hurry. I can lope behind them for as long as I need to or swing my rope as long as I need to or just whatever it takes to get the job done. But I'm never in a hurry and they're seeing different country and it, it makes a horse's mind really solid and puts a good foundation on them. Out here, I can just pitch them their head and go do a job and cover ground and I might be on their back all day and never pick on them or never get after them. I can give him his head and let him go be a horse and put miles on him and then he's got a whole better outlook on life, you know. Out here he learns to listen to me and trust me and it's no different than when it comes to scoring a head horse. A head horse that truly scores great listens to me on his back through no matter what's going on. Whether you're at the NFR or the BFI or at home in the practice pen, if that horse can't focus on me and trust my hands, then he's never gonna score good. Well, out here, he doesn't, he doesn't have anything to, he has to trust me. I mean, I could get mad and tie the sucker to that fence over there and walk back to the trailer, but I'm not going to. And so it, it does a lot for a horse's mind. When I was, a kid, heck. I started driving to school when I was 14 and we have a feed yard out south of Snyder and I would take a colt to the feed yard, Dr. Cattle, and go to school, go to football practice or whatever, go back to the feed yard and Dr. Moore and we had run, we kept at that around a thousand head out there all the time and it's, it's crazy looking back now because 
I'm supposedly a horse trainer, but I see the, the horses I was making 10 years ago when I was in high school, I see them the other day at the BFI, there was five horses there that I rode when I was in high school. And I look at them horses and I'm like, those are some of the best horses I've made, which they're the most aged. I know there's horses coming along, but they just had a job. They, I doctored cattle in the feed yard. We doctored cattle in wheat pasture. Every winter we'd have 1500 head turned out and it would be nothing for my dad and I to doctor 40 or 50 head a day. You know, we'd both take a couple of colts and it, I look back at them horses now and it's crazy that I really don't, I didn't know what I was doing at that point, but I was doing a job on them and that's what made those horses so good.